Right now, I'm standing on the Greek side of Cyprus, but right over that wall behind me is the Turkish side. The capital of Nicosia, where I am now, is the only capital city on Earth that's split between two continents, Europe and Asia. What does that mean? It means people on this side of the island speak Greek, are mostly Orthodox Christians, and identify themselves as Greek Cypriots. And on that side, they speak Turkish, are mostly Sunni Muslims, and call themselves Turkish Cypriots. Why is Cyprus divided in the first place? Before I go on, I must disclose that I hate politics and this is not an opinionated video or a political debate. My intention in making this video is to teach you some facts about Cyprus that I've learned while being here, as well as share unbiased observations of what I'm seeing. Cyprus is a small island in the East Mediterranean Sea, about the size of Connecticut, with 1.1 million people. Evidence of human activity on the island dates back to the 10th century BC, and throughout history, many world powers have established themselves here, including the Greeks, Egyptians, Assyrians, Persians, Turkish, and the British. The island gained independence from Britain in 1960, and shortly after, tensions arose between the Greek and Turkish communities living on the island. Violent clashes between the two groups led to the United Nations peacekeeping force setting up along the so-called Green Line. The name comes from the green pencil that the UN general used to draw the line on the map. On July 20th, 1974, Turkish troops invaded Cyprus, which led to an immediate division separating the Greek and Turkish people along the green line, which still exists today, some 43 years later. As I wander around the Greek side of Nicosia, I don't see any signs of conflict, tensions, or unhappiness. I see a peaceful place with happy people, hanging out in hip cafes, chilling outside, and enjoying the sunshine. Life is good. If you never told me there's a complicated border one mile away, then I'd never know. But so far, I've only seen life on the Greek side of Nicosia. What's it like on the other side of the border? I'm very curious to know, and there's only one way to find out. Walking across the border is like time stood still for 43 years. Old walls, unfinished paint, strange vibes. Photos weren't allowed, so I had to sneak a few in. After I successfully crossed the border, all right, I've officially entered Turkish Cyprus. I spent a few hours exploring the Turkish side of Nicosia, and it's interesting because it's not the Euro anymore, it's the Turkish Lira, and all signs are in Turkish. There were a lot of shops and cafes like the Greek side, but it was a lot less lively. The highlight here was going in the huge mosque, where I chilled for a while to escape the heat. I was planning to go back to the Greek side after this, but my curiosity grew larger about Turkish Cyprus, so I jumped on a local bus and headed north to an ancient coastal city called Kyrenia. It was absolutely beautiful. Check out the views from this castle. So, what's next for Cyprus? Reunification talks have been going on for decades, but no action has taken place. Who knows what the future will bring, but let's just hope it's not war. I'm Drew Binsky, and if you like my travel videos, please click subscribe and join me as I plan to visit every country in the world.